I add a checks to ensure a successful operation. Two boats, all named after lustral sons of Ghana, George Pa Grant and Private Odate Lamte, usually carry the team. For tonight's operation, Western Regional Director of the Ghana Maritime Authority, Captain William Thompson, and Marine Police Commander Idi Seidu are coming along. What we normally do every night, so long as the sea is calm enough, the conditions are okay, uh, we live here with a team of about nine, ten people. We have two crafts that operate. This one, Park Grand, that we are on, and then there's a second one called Private Odati. This one goes out there to anchor, and then the Private Odati deploys from this one, and then goes out around the anchorage. So our presence in the anchorage is very, very vital to the safe operation of the port. Because of the numbers involved, I always deploy two officers. So tonight, we are even four because I'm here myself, plus my assistant who is also around, together with the two regular officers. So in effect, today we have four marine police officers on board. And they are rescue swimmers as well. Private Odati Lamte moves first, followed by Pagran. This increase in night patrols is in response to the growing cases of thievery, illegal bankering and illegal unregulated unreported fishing activities at the Takrade Anchorage and further along the coast of the western region. After traveling for about 10 minutes, the boat, Pagrant, stops. We are at the Anchorage where ships transacting business with the Takrade port are berthed. Here, Armed so, men from the Ghana are, Marine Police the patrol, board, the private Odate Lamte, which is a smaller boat and can easily the move closer to the ships uh, to search for criminals. Guys, what we are going to do this evening is we are going to do our normal patrol. And the usual way that we do it is to first go count the dendes that are already there. Then you go around the anchorage. Look at the vessels, the way they are. If there is any fishing vessels and all those things, you tell them that yes, they are not supposed to be at their usual place and all those things. So, as usual, the patrol, you go first, you check the dendes, then you proceed to the anchorage. You will be joined by this uh, armed police, as usual, and they will escort you to go to your rounds. For these men, it is a familiar routine. They have been doing this since the early part of the year. They will return in a few hours' time to be replaced by another group. We are 100% prepared. This is what we've been doing every night as as far as the weather permits us this is what we do so uh, we always have a team ready to undertake the night night exercises so normally how long will it take you from 6 p.m to the full morning 6 a.m so throughout the night they are patrolling so the officers as they are here they change the same thing applies to gma staff they change so that when this team go around they come back and another set gets on board the vessel and go again. Everything that happens on the operation is geared towards achieving results. Even the positioning of the power grant at the anchorage has its relevance. You know, normally we have some crafts coming as canoes. But once they get close to the vessel, they attempt boarding and then they go and steal and cause problems there. So these are the ones that we look out for. And at the same time, at night, if anything illicit goes on, you will have to pass here to New Takradi and therefore we'll be waiting here. At the same time, we have a very good view of second D from here towards the naval base and second D. And basically that's why we have chosen uh, this position. The team will run shift till the break of dawn before they come back to shore. Ultimately, the patrols are to make the Takradi port safe for business. Now let's do some politics now. The Opposition National Democratic Congress, NDC, in the Ashanti region has cast doubt over the Electoral Commission's ability to ensure adherence to COVID-19 safety protocols in rolling out the new uh, voter registration exercise. Uh, Regional Secretary of the Party, Kwame Zhu, told TV3 some lapses have been observed in the piloting. However, the MPP's Director of Elections in the Ashanti region believes it is early days yet. William Evans Income reports.
So the whole process begins from here. Um, the moment you enter, you, you must wash your hands and that is the first stage of observing the social protocols as far as COVID-19 is concerned. Then you join the queue of these are the potential electorates as far as voting in the country is concerned. So you can see enough space to have an aisle, uh, about two meters stretch, and they are orderly seated. So when it reaches your turn, then you begin the first stage of the process. This is where you have to prove that you are eligible as far as voting in this country is concerned. So you have, you have to provide your valid ID card as a requisite for the, the securing a voter's ID card. So that is where that process begins. So you show your card and then your data is entered into the system. From there, you come to the uh, this particular place, the second stage of the process where your picture is taken and executed into the UEC database. From there, a card is generated and this is the final stage where your card is laminated and then given to you. So this is what we should be expecting when the voter registration exercise begins. D today is a, a, a piloting, so we are not seeing so much pressure, but whatever happens today will inform the EC as to what to do. If at the end of the day there's consensus and we are to go by this uh, process, Will you say you are happy about the way things are, have been organized? The mass registration exercise, we cannot have this much control because announcements are made. People will voluntarily move from their homes and come. But this is a regimented exercise, a controlled atmosphere. Be that as it may, I did indicate that the way the chairs are arranged and virtually everybody has been supplied or have come as requested with their own face mask. I think so far it is okay. The difficulty, however, has been with the agents. You could clearly see, when we are done, your cameraman can throw the camera around, and the registration officials, and even the distance between the applicant and the desk officer. That is far less than uh, 50 centimeters. Well, I've just uh, been here. Uh, we were discussing the procedure of registration. So we are here to simply look at the processes and then ask questions. Those that we do not understand, they, they will explain to us. But we are still here, we are still waiting for that important meeting between the various political parties, representatives in the Ashanti region and the Electoral Commission as to whatever transpired at that meeting we will let you know. William Evans Kum TV3 News, Electoral Commission, Kumasi. All right, so let's go back to the Ashanti region to William Evans Inkum, who is standing by with uh, live updates from the grounds and registration, ongoing re registration exercise in the region. Uh, so uh, let's hear him now. Given the uh, voters' ID card, this is a dress rehearsal or pilot, and as far as um, the electoral commission is concerned, I mean, one would say a stage that has been provided for that uh, bigger exercise in the coming days. So, as you can see, these people are uh, potential voters who have come, and very soon they will be going through the various stages of the process. So, the first stage uh, begins from here, and this is where the person will have to. Uh, um, present a valid uh, ID card for um, the data to be collected. From there, go to the, uh, the second stage where the person's data will be imputed into the Electoral Commission uh, database. From there, a card is given, as you know already. But we have been following this particular process very closely, trying to understand the duration that one will have to, or the time that one will have to spend before a card card is delivered. And I must say that the first case that we followed, it took the person 15 minutes before um, her card was delivered to her. And this person had come with two guarantors. I would say a semi-illiterate person in terms of well, academic 
uh, status. Uh, the second one, it took him nine minutes for the car to be delivered. But let me speak to the Ashanti Regional Director of the Electoral Commission, Benjamin Banobio. So, sir, uh, we, I really want to understand the, the, the difference here. Um, 15 minutes and nine minutes. And looking at the number of people, sometimes we tend to believe that... It's going to be a, a bit difficult when, I mean, the main exercise begins. Yeah, it, it's not going to be difficult. Because the 15 minutes or the 9 minutes you are talking about, you see, the moment the person leaves this first table, another person is there. So within the 15 minutes, more than three people have been captured. Yeah. It's not just that we finish with one at all the stages before the next person comes. On the uh, uh, average, we are looking at maybe five minutes per an applicant. Okay. Yeah, but where there are these challenges, like maybe somebody raising challenge or maybe uh, coming with uh, 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 guarantees and things like that, it can extend to maybe seven minutes or more. But that is not for only one person. Because the moment he leaves the first table, another person gets onto the first table. Okay. And so they will be following. So within a period, maybe 10 minutes, more than two people who have registered. I think the major difference was detected at the, point, the second stage where the picture is taken, the data is imputed and all of that. We realized that the first case spent four minutes. The second case spent five minutes. Yeah. You know, this camera that we are using there is not just taking only the pictures. It's taking your iris and some other features of the face so that we can use that one to input into the device that will be used for the facial recognition. So it's not just the blanket uh, picture, prop, then it goes. It looks at certain features and captures them. Yeah, so it will be a little slower than just an ordinary flash picture. That's how you see it. But then you will still be able to work within the time frame. In the sense that the 15 minutes that you are talking about, we may have finished with about two or three applicants. Okay, so in your own estimation, approximately what time frame are you looking at for a, a, a person? Uh, you cannot give a time frame for a person because it's an ongoing activity. This man gets here. The moment he finished with the first table, another person is there. He gets here. The moment he finished, this man is there. In that order. Yeah. So roughly an average of five minutes, you should be able to finish with one person. Now, let's talk about some of the concerns that the NDC rep earlier raised. It has to do with social distancing. I think his concern has to do with the political party representatives. Um, yes, I also saw it myself um, when it comes to the fiscal distance and that was, uh, it looks like a provision wasn't made for them. How do you respond to that? You know, we made provisions for everybody. Look at the people who are coming to register. You can observe the social distancing there. We position the chairs in a way that at least one meter apart. But when they came, because they were trying to socialize among themselves, they decided to get closer. We're even still insisting. You cannot do that. But because they came in, in twos. He's my friend, he's my friend. For a long time, we have no hold, right up, and they have met here. And each of them, because they have been talking on radio differently at different times, they met here and they felt they need to do what they were doing. It's not that we have not provided. We have, you can see the arrangement that we have here. So what he's saying is not tenable. Well, my very final question has to do with the uh, meeting that you're supposed to have with the party representatives today. Uh, what is the focal point? No, we are not having a meeting today. I invited them to come and observe the pilot program, as we are doing here. So they came to observe. If they have any challenges, they can raise it and then we will resolve it. So today is a pilot program. We are piloting our uh, 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 kits and we want to know how the kit will work on the D-Day. 
We want to look at the challenges that are likely to be faced so that we can resolve them ahead of time. Yeah, so today is not a meeting day, it's observation of pilot program by the Electoral Commission. Thank you very much, sir, for speaking to TV3. So, uh, Stephen, we're still here. We're monitoring the process, and we'll be feeding you in with more information as they, um, as and when we come across. William Evans, Income TV3 News, Electoral Commission, Kumasi. Back to you, Stephen. Thank you very much, uh, William Evans Inkum. And uh, this is still midday live from our studios at Adisawe Kandai. And Accra, let's go to the northern region uh, where a similar exercise is taking place. Chairman of the People's National Convention, uh, Bernard Mona, is expected at the Criminal Investigations Department of the Ghana Police Service. The invitation followed comments he made in regards to the Electoral Commission's decision to compile a new voters register. Uh, Mr. Mona, who is also the convener of the Interparliament, Party resistance against a new uh, voters register. Our reporter Godfrey Tanam is at the CID headquarters. Uh, is joining us. I uh, would update uh, now. Right, but before we do that, before we go to uh, Godfrey Tanam, let's go to Christopher Mwakwai to tell you that he's in the northern region where the pilot exercise is also taking place. So, uh, Christopher, good morning and thank you uh, very much uh, for your time. Uh, so, quickly, I want to get a fair idea of how the situation is where you are. Hello, Christopher. Hello, Christopher, if you can hear me. Good. So I want you to give me an idea of what the situation is, where you are. Right, I think Christopher is having uh, challenges hearing us, uh, but this is still midday live from our studios at Adisawi Kanda in Accra. And uh, we're trying to get uh, Christopher. Marco. Christopher, can you hear me now? All right, uh, Christopher is not hearing us. I uh, will try and get back to uh, him shortly. I will continue. But this is still midday live from our studios at Adisawe Kandai. And we'll take a short break and we'll return. We'll see if we can reconnect to him and hear the other stories we have for you. Please stay. Right, we apologize for the technical challenges there, but let's see if we can get Eric J crossing over to us uh, with update from the pilot exercise in the Western region. Thank you very much. So we are currently here at the Western Region Office of the Electoral Commission, where the Electoral Commission has begun a two-day exercise, that is a piloting exercise for the voter registration exercise. We came here this morning at about 9 a.m., and when we came, the process was already ongoing with some persons in the queue trying to uh, test the system. Now, before you get to the main place where you are made to join a queue. There are two big vertical buckets at the entrance where you are made to disinfect. Then a few meters away from that there is a gentleman there who is holding a thermometer gun to check your temperature. And also on each of the three tables that you will have to pass to before you get your, your voter's ID card there is a uh, a hand sanitizer there and you are made to sanitize before you go through the process so this is one of the tables that you have to go through now as you can see the gentleman there is going through the process to for his biometric details to be taken then this is the final table that you come to before you are finally given your id card and i can see that um so far 28 males have registered as against 10 females who have registered. So currently, so far, so good. And also, there are representatives of the various political parties here monitoring the exercise. We have the regional uh, organizer of the New Patriotic Party, Abdul Ghanu, and we also have 
Well, um, the Deputy Secretary for the MPP is also here, and I can see this gentleman also from the National Democratic Congress. I want to pick their thoughts on what they've witnessed so far. Uh, good afternoon. Welcome to Media Live on TV3. Good afternoon, my brother. Uh, so, so far, how has the process been for you? So far, so good. I think um, the process has been so smooth as expected earlier on because during the um, exercise this morning from 9 o'clock till now, you can see that um, the process has been smooth from the first table to the last table. Averagely, we are told that you have spent between 15 and 20 minutes. Would you say that it's ideal? Yes, because um, looking at the new machines that they are having, um, the people who are using the machine, that's, I think that's their first time of using the machine as a demo one. So definitely, you know, it will take time for them to identify the keys very well. And um, going forward, the time has been fluctuating. Sometimes others will go through 15 minutes, others will go 12 minutes, others will go 20 minutes. So average is about 15 minutes. But um, currently, looking at what is going on with some days in training, um, the machine will run smoothly as we are expected. And compared to the previous one, I think this machine is um, one of the best machines so far I've seen throughout this process. Um, it is 12.25 and so far less than 40 people have registered. Will you say this is encouraging? Yeah, very, very encouraging because comparing to the previous one, um, you need 100 people in um, every machine per day. So as we sit now, I can say um, it's one of the best that we have seen because it's less than four hours and we have more than um, 40 people registering. Okay. Thank you very much. So uh, I have uh, Mr. Fodjo, who is also the Deputy Regional Secretary for the National Democratic Congress. Uh, tell us your observations so far. So far, what is happening here is very cumbersome. The exercise What's cumbersome? Very, very cumbersome. If you look at what is really happening now. You know, we started about 8 o'clock and it's after 12 now. Yes. The number of registrants is less than 40. So even if you compare the situation now as a parallel exercise now, if you compare the number here, which is not so huge, to the proposed registration the EC intends to do, you look at it and you see that there's danger coming. Because on that period, a lot of people will be crowded at the polling station. And if you look at this situation, then we have to anticipate a disaster. So what will you propose? Oh, as for us and the NDC, we know, you know our stance so far as the registration is concerned. But we are here to pass through the process okay. just because we think that there will be limited registration. And that's the more reason why we are here. So what, 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 what aspects of the process do you think that it is cumbersome? For which reason um, persons are spending more than usual time? My brother, you have, you have been here with me since morning. And if you look at one person on the first table, where the, he's going to fill the form A, the number of time he will spend. And between the first table and the second table, where you t take the pictures and do the biometric itself, the, the time limit you spent, there's a queue there. Between the two tables, there's a queue there. So before you get it down to where they will print it for the person, it's going to take a longer time. So if you compare that one to a bulk exercise, then it means that there's disaster coming. Okay. What about other measures in terms of ensuring social protocols and all that? The social protocol, I can see those on the queue is working. But those sounding is not working. But of course, at the entrance, you have to wash your hand. Then they use the thermometer to take your temperature. That is done. Well, and I think that the, uh, the fingerprint machine to desensitize it after each person, and that is good. But the whole process and the timing is very bad. It's very bad. Well, that's that's what he's saying. Uh, I think um, that's why you ask him which part of the process, because looking at registration tables, you have where your name, your details will be taken. Then you come to the machine where they will be keying in. You know, um, it used to have 
this hand scanning machine. Currently, they don't have it here. What they have is that immediately they scan you, they do everything, machine picks it once. So we are looking at the process itself, how and the manner people go through the process. That is what we are talking about. And I think it's perfect because he can't get anything to say about this machine, but he's re-echoing the position of the, um, the National Party itself. Eh? Of, of course, they don't want the registration to happen. That is why he is uh, it's preaching. The challenge is the, num the minutes you have to spend and before have, you get have, your have, ID card. I have, I have explained earlier, telling you that um, the minute is because there's a new machine. The person is, who is sitting on the machine, there's his first time using the machine. So you have these challenges, 15 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 10 minutes. But going forward, you can see that the, 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 even the minutes have reduced. So you don't anticipate this during voting day? No, no, there's registration. There's not a voting day. Sorry, sorry registration yes. and subsequent um, time that we'll have to use the BVLs and have to witness this process. If we, 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 we are to have another set of machines, Certain somewhere, you would have heard that the difference of, I mean, key in will be so, so, so limited in terms of minutes. But this is obviously a make of one police station, so absolutely. this is what absolutely, yeah, absolutely. So I said it won't be the same everywhere, and going forward, I think um, the person will be familiar to the machines, so the machines will be easier to be used. So it's not the making of the machine, right? Okay. So, so, any final words before we leave? My final words is that you now he was referring to the machine. The machine itself, the commissioners themselves are testing the machine, the efficiency of the machine. And they themselves don't know how the machine is going to work until this exercise is done. Because I asked a particular question that in case where, in the situation where the machine could not pick somebody's free campus. What is the alternative? Okay. They said when the start situation comes, they will know how to go about it. Okay. But you don't have to wait for the situation to come before you have a plan B for it. Okay, thank you very much. So um, these are views from the um, National Democratic Congress and the New Patriotic Party about the current piloting for the voter registration exercise. Eric here with JTV3 News, second D. Eric LJ there. I'm Stephen Ante. This is still Midday Live. The Ministry of Education has directed that all final year classes should be split into a population size of 25. The sector minister, Dr. Matthew Opokoprempe, indicated that this is to ensure strict compliance to social distancing directives in schools to prevent the spread of coronavirus. He cautioned parents against allowing wards who are sick to go to school. He, however, confirmed that the West African Examinations Council will conduct exams for final year students at the senior high schools. When schools do reopen, the schools will not be available for religious activities. And it's simple. We don't want too many interactions that can bring in and take out uh, if we perish their thought. If it's to so happen, we can contact Trace, who must have brought or come to the school with this virus we have to deal with. So we want to keep it slim and make sure that only students and their lecturers or teachers are in school. When the junior schools, senior high schools do open, there will be no visitors allowed for the period that they are in school. Parents cannot go and visit their kids for that period. And the junior high school is going to operate a less, uh, a shorter school day so that playground activities would not be permitted. Assemblies would not be permitted. The kids will start school at 9 a.m. and by 1, they should be done and go to school. Breaks will be had in the class. The students will rest before, between lectures, 45 minutes, they will have a rest for 15 minutes before another, and a maximum of four lectures a day, and they can go back to school. And all class sizes are going to be split to ensure the social distancing protocols. We do know that averaging the senior high school, a maximum class is about 50. So we want to maintain classes not more than 25. And in the junior high school, not more than 30. Ghana Health Service, working with Ghana Education Service, has mapped schools 
to health facilities or public health specialists. So that if a child is unwell, that child should be isolated and the specific uh, public health official or authority or institution notified for the necessary tests and things to be done. This would also allow us, if, even if there is an incident in the school, to be able to isolate, quarantine, and contact trace the necessary people that we have to do. That senior high schools will reopen on the 22nd. All day students in boarding schools. That means schools that are operated as boarding schools as well. Those day students would have accepted as boarders. For pure day schools, there will be enhanced protocols to look after the children. Uh, the police services blocked the main road from Osu towards Kwame Nkrumah Circle to prevent supporters of PNC uh, Chairman Bernard Mona from getting closer to the CID headquarters. The Criminal Investigations Department, CID, uh, invited Mr. Mona following comments he made in relation to the Electoral Commission's decision to compile a new voters register. Bernard Mona is also the convener of the Interparty Resistance against the new uh, register. Godfrey Tanam is at the CID headquarters and is joining us on the telephone line. Uh, for updates. So, um, Mr. Tanam, thanks very much. So, what can you report? Hello, Godfrey, can you hear me? Hello. Yes. So, what can you report? Right. So, uh, apparently, it is raining that the protest of Benamona said they are not leaving until Benamona is released from the CID headquarters. So, anyhow, the road from the uh, OCT circle was blocked by the police there. Uh, trying to prevent the supporters from getting closer to the CID headquarters. So, but after the race started, they were able to move closer to the CID headquarters. So they are now closer to the CID headquarters entrance with the police preventing them from getting closer. I mean, very, very close to the, to the entrance. They are standing on the street, and then vehicles are passing by. Sometimes they get onto the street to prevent the vehicles from so, so it, it has been very difficult to attack for the police. I mean, it's raining and they are filling the way, making sure that they get onto the one mm, outside. So, so Godfrey, what's the CID saying in particular? Because I get the sense that if they're blocking the road from Osu all the way to Kwame Nkrumah Circle, that's, that's a large stretch of road to be blocked. Yes. Right. So, that is what they did in the, in the morning, uh, and then at the start now, it has been said. Yeah, the uh, supporters are on the side of the road, and the sometimes they try to get on to the street. But currently, the police have blocked. Right, uh, go for a time. We'll leave it here. Thank you very much uh, for the update. So, if you've just joined us, uh, the uh, Ghana Police Service has put some restrictions to uh, stop supporters of Bernard Mona from getting to the CID headquarters, and we'll be keeping an eye on that. Our man, Godfrey Tanam, is there for update. This is still Midday Live from our studios at Adesawe Kanda and Accra. Up next is business. Welcome back. Now, hundreds of freight forwarders and importers trooped into the long room at the Tema Port to picket against the deployment of the integrated customs management system. The forwarders say the new system, which was fully rolled out at the port and the Kutuka International Airport Monday, is still fraught with a lot of challenges. There is more in the following report. The Integrated Custom Management System, ICUMS, took effect at the port and at the Kotoka International Airport. 
importers and freight forwarders began to throng the IQ centers, unable to complete the process upon accessing the new system. Few minutes after, the number grew with more forwarders demanding answers. So I just saw you rushing to the help decks. What are you going to do there? I went there to inquire on, on, on the level of my process. But what, where I've reached, I'm shocked. So I went there to ask them what I should do. And they are telling me that I should go back and start the whole thing again. I'm, uh, my container too is on demorage. So if I go and then I couldn't complete the whole thing, that it means I have to pay another charges again. And it will, it will be my cost. The importer won't pay. I just came here to just try whether my TIN number with a new system that we, ha we have will work or something like that. But since morning we've, we've came here, we've been asking questions, nobody's willing to give us proper answers. So behind me is one of the help decks that has been instituted and designed by ICOM officials for the start of the program so that freight forwarders and clearing agents will come in here with all their questions for them and their issues to be solved. Tension began to build up with many of them gathering and disregarding the social distancing protocols. The whole system should be migrated. It should be alongside, the UNIPAS should be alongside the GCNET. Frustration sets in with more massing up. By 12 noon, the numbers increase, leading to the expression of dissatisfaction about demorages which will accrue for importers to pay. ICOM officials attempted to answer their questions defending the system. We have also our call center which is very active at the moment. If you call the number, why not? You will be able to get the help that you need to. We also have what we call the rapid response team which is also on standby. By 12 noon, the numbers increase, leading to the expression of dissatisfaction about demorages which will accrue for importers to pay. A delegation made up of the Minister for Trade and Industry, Alan Kujo Tremantin, the Commissioner of Customs, the Commissioner General of the Ghana Revenue Authority, and the Deputy Minister for Trade and Industry arrived to inspect the system. Angry forwarders began to chant songs. The Commissioner of Customs, Colonel Retired Kojo Damwa, attempted to calm tempers. And ladies and gentlemen, you are important stakeholders in this whole business about clearing goods. We have come here to appreciate you. We know the good job you've been doing. We have given information in the past few weeks and to some extent members about the changes that were about to take place. Now, today marks a different milestone in your operations. We are aware that if you start any new thing, you are likely to have one or two challenges. He reckoned the challenges, but added that all issues would be solved. They have different types of challenges. So we want to group them according to their challenges. And we have officers, dedicated officers who are here because of them. So for instance, if you say you have problems with the shipping lines, the officer who is dealing with problems about shipping lines will take you one after the other and help you to help uh, solve that problem about shipping lines. The Minister for Trade and Industry, Alan Kojo Chermanting, also added his voice. <laughs> Clearing process came to a standstill. Justin and TV3. And that's our wrap up with the business. Up next is sports with Yao for Sulabi. Hello, good afternoon. It's time to do sports here on Midday Live on TV3. My name is Yao Fusulavi. To our very first story, and technical director of Inter Ally Sporting Club, Willie Kluche, is calling for contact sports to be restarted. Now, speaking to TV3, he maintained it offers a careful balance of what sports can 
and cannot be allowed. Contact sports really creature says can be resumed behind closed doors. Other than the current restrictions, relegates football to the background as a not too important sector. For me, football has been treated as if it's not an important sport. So football can wait. But I think there is more into football than the way people see it. Playing behind closed doors, we are okay. Because the sports commentators will be there, the cameras will be there, and even sometimes they play football in Europe. We sit in Africa and in Ghana, and we enjoy it as if the ball is being played here. Making his case further, he called for the easing of the restrictions on contact sports, insisting it can start with allowing clubs to train. At least football, if we are not ready now, they should at least allow us to go to training. Because it takes some time to bring a rotten player to a good shape. I don't know who presented the footballers their case. Because, look, the, the club owners, they are even getting fed up to be paying their players. Three years now, they are not making, they are not getting their investment back. Now, for three months now, no football and they are, they are paying people. So even the club owners now, they are getting fed up to pay the players. Paying them for what? And only God knows when this thing will end. The calls for contact sports to resume may grow stronger in the coming days. But the measures when eased may have to fit into general expectations of whether people will adhere to the protocols. Well, that was Daniel, your boys reports. Now forward, Odion Igalo has extended his loan deal at Manchester United until January 2021. A 30-year-old joined United uh, in January from Spanish Super League side Shanghai Shenhua initially until the 31st of May. There's no option for the Premier League club to buy the Nigeria international. Igalo scored four times in eight appearances at the Old Trafford side, including a, a goal in a 5-0 Europa League win over Lask on the 12th of March. And out to Nigeria, where Super Eagles coach Gennot Raw says the need to stay winning is what informed his contract extension decision with Nigeria. In an exclusive interview with Juliet Bewa, he says, given everything he has done for the team, he feels the urge to continue. I believe that my mission is not finished yet, and we have a lot of things to do with this young team. I, I have a good feeling with these players. You know, this is a team I built since four years now and would be very, very difficult to leave them now. So I decided to continue. I also appreciate the confidence from uh, NFF officials. The okay. philosophy is based on respect, on, uh, I think, a mentality which is we try to be very professional. We try to be all the time uh, respectful with the players and uh, we appreciate what they are doing. So uh, when you have the communication based on honesty, humility and complicity now, and I think still uh, the team can progress because they are very young. We have experienced players like Ahmed Musa, of course, like uh, Ekong, Balogun, Omeruo, but we have also very, very, very young players who we try to show they are able to replace former stars of Super Eagles who decided to stop the career. So this is an interesting moment to continue the progress and also to develop our game. Well, that's coach Gennot Rowe there. Now to some more stories. And Liverpool manager Jurgen Klopp says he is really happy to be back to watch his wonderful football team again as they continue preparations for the Premier League's return on the 17th of June. Club side are 25 points clear at the top of the table and chasing the club's first league title in three decades. The Premier League was suspended on the 13th of March because of the coronavirus pandemic.
we will see about how life is until then. If it happens, we are still not champions, so we have to play football games and we want and we have to win them um, on top of that. And we don't want to stop winning after two games or whatever. They are difficult enough. So our first three games are Everton, Crystal Palace and, and Man City. So I, I, I don't see any results written in the stars there already. We have to work really hard for that. Look, you, you celebrate always, wherever it is, you'll be celebrating the Champions League first in, in, uh, uh, in Madrid, in a hotel. Yes, there are a lot of people around. You don't find time for your family and stuff like this. You cannot, if you want, you always can find any issues in, in the situation. Uh, if, we, if we will be champion, then whichever celebration is possible, we will do as a team internally and with all our supporters in a moment when it's allowed to do so again. And then I can promise if it happens, there would be a parade as well. Whenever, who cares? What we only need <laughs> we only need then one day where everybody is able to come and then we will do that. That's Liverpool's manager there, Jurgen Klopp, bringing us to the end of the sports news this afternoon on Media Live on TV3. International News is up next. Welcome back. Now, singer and dance star A.K. Songstress is unhappy with the president's decision to open churches and other religious groups and not other businesses. Opening churches while closing businesses which contribute to the growth of the economy. Uh, I can't think far. Uh, that's according to him. He says this is an African problem. The stamina composer noted in a tweet from Archex, AK Songstress was uh, talking about the pubs, drinking sports, nightclubs and related jobs. The singer thinks it will be a step in the right direction to allow people in that bracket to also earn a living. Now to some more entertainment uh, stories. Hip Life artist Yao Beck says he will not collaborate with his former label mates, uh, Mr. Drew and uh, Creamy, uh, because they lack the skills to write their own songs. A rapper in an interview on 3FM's uh, Campus Rocks revealed if it will take him 50 years to blow, then so be it. I, Yao Beck. Yeah, yeah. Yao Beck announced his presence in the music industry with a hit song, Independent Lady, after taking part in MTN Hitmaker Season 7. Independent Lady, which I am a lady, I will save you from Beckett to Lady. So, the young act who had a lot of controversies after departing with his former manager, Kewa, further revealed that his former label mate, Mr. Drew's latest song, Eat, which featured award-winning Stone Boy, is a mixtape of Rotimi of Power Series fame's song titled Love Ridden. He also revealed that he is not in a rush to get to the peak in the music industry if it only requires that he features artists who do not write their own songs? Mr. Drew. They don't know song right. We are not going to collaborate with anybody where you don't know song right. Mr. Drew doesn't know how to write a song. But he has songs out. He has a new one with Stone Boy called It. It be, it be, you know what it be? It be mixed tape. Wrote to me. Go listen to Wrote to me. By? It was just a... Uh, that be the title. Love by Wrote to me. Okay. Yeah. The artist is called Wrote to me. So He's a Nigerian. He lives in the States. The one who was featured in the Power, power movie. movie. Yeah, oh. that's his song. I mean, I don't go feature somebody you know go feel right. If it could take me 50 years before I go blow, I go day cool. And to feature somebody who is not passionate with the work, he just won't feel. Right, so uh, that's it for the entertainment news now. I'm Stephen Enti. Thanks for making time to be with us on Midday Live. There's more news at 3news.com. That's how we wrap up. Have a great afternoon.